kind of described uh, what the system is more in depth, and he called it public capitalism. Just because capitalism, you know, it's uh, supposed to be a system where if you work hard and smart, you can be rich. But only today, you know, only 1% of people can do that because it's like a, a game of musical chairs. There's only enough to go around for 1%. But under public capitalism, it's like it's a super efficient uh, economic system that ensures 100% are rich as long as they're, you know, fulfilling their work obligation. If they're not, then they don't get to take uh, part in the benefits. Why is nothing free in life? Um, well, we're taught that, uh, well, if you ask the average person that, why is nothing free, they say, oh, I don't know, I really never thought about it, even though that's like the premise of our lives. But they say it's because we don't have enough to go around. That's why nothing's free. But, you know, uh, if there is enough to go around, it is free. And if you look at, like, land today, that's people's biggest expense. You know, you have to pay a 30-year income for 35 years for it. But number one, it's abundant. And when you fly in a plane and look out the window in the United States, you see nothing but unused land. For instance, 98% of it's not used. So uh, number one, it's abundant. And number two, no one made the land, so there was no labor cost to make that you should have to pay someone for. So in theory, uh, land should be free because it's abundant. And according to the first lesson of economics, supply and demand, if supply is greater than demand, it's free. Well, that's when, that when we first came here, like in Indians, they put a stick, you know, and they would get the land, you know, wasn't it? Uh, they put their stick in the land, and they would claim. Right, it's like the Indians, uh, you know, occupied the land and didn't have to pay anyone for it, and then when they got kicked out, someone said, I own the land now, even though he didn't make it or do anything, and said, if you want to use it, you got to pay a 30-year income for 35 years, and it's basically a gun to your head because you can't live without it, so. And that system's kind of continued up to today. It's just people don't think about it too much. And there's a lot of land that's not owned? It's just regular? Just um, to... No, the government owns most of the land. They're the largest landowner in the United States. But um, you know, who did the government get the land from? You know, no one. They didn't make it. And in theory, the people are the government. So in theory, it's the people's land, and it kind of belongs to everyone. So. Yeah, so we should just put a stick you know, like they used to do uh, it, a claim like that, the land. We should, you know, be able to keep the land you have now, except you don't have to pay so much for it. Interesting. So if, um, how would life be if we had an abundant supply of land, abundant supply of food and shelter? What would, how would that? Well, the economic book says life would be utopia or fantasy land where everyone's needs and wants are met and we wouldn't have wars and poverty and violence. And uh, it would be great. You know, it's like everyone's dream scenario. Like, oh, I wish life could be that way where I didn't have to stress about paying my bills and, you know, worry about, uh, you know, other things. So it would be paradise, you know, heaven on earth type thing. And it would be yeah, great. Because war, isn't war basically about land? I mean, yeah. I mean, right now, uh, like even ISIS, they, they're trying to claim the land. They feel that it was their land. And in all our other wars, it's about land. And, and during the uh, Crusades and during, uh, you know, 1,600 years ago, and I remember when Scotland was uh, fighting in England, it was all about land. They wanted, that's a whole idea. Everything was been about land. Right, and people are under the impression that since there's not enough land to go around and we need it to survive, that's why uh, we have to fight over it. But if people knew that there's more than enough and everyone can have plenty, then you're not going to see wars, and because it would just be, you know, in our, it wouldn't be in our best interest. You know, you also talked about, um, uh, besides we're talking about land and abundance, you were also talking about what is the root cause of disease and aging. I mean, I'm so impressed by all the things that you know, and you know, and you're so young, and you seem to, you seem to know, you seem to know uh, so much. Um, about everything. I'm, oh, I'm kind of impressed oh, by that. I'm not a know it all. I just, you know, I discovered things that are out there that anyone could find. I just uh, researched them. And anyone could do the same if they put in some time. But as far as uh, what's the root cause of disease and aging, it's poisons in our food, air, and water. You know, there's a lot of chemicals such as fluoride and uh, asbestos and arsenic that, um, you know, cause disease in the body. And, uh, you know, people say if we didn't have poisons that we would be living a lot longer and we wouldn't be, you know, aging. Like aging after the age of 30, your physical maturity is a disease. Um, you know, just for instance, some historical background, 
you know, they say, you know, Adam lived 930 years in the Bible, and, you know, Methuselah too. I'm not saying that's true because I don't have any proof, but one explanation I read was they didn't have all the poisons back then, so in theory it could have been possible for them to live that age and still look like they're 30. So, um, you know. And there's a lot of companies out there that are working on trying to cure disease and reverse aging, such as Google. You know, they started a company, Calico, to do that. Um, there was a guy on the cover of Forbes magazine in May of this year saying, you know, can this man reverse aging? And uh, there's also a Bank of America Merrill Lynch report that they sent out to their investors in May saying that it's possible to extend life to three to four hundred years or even infinitely in our lifetime. So those are all, you know, things you could verify and, you know, don't believe me, you could look it up. But, um, you know, I have the sources right here, you know, Google, on Time Magazine, the Forbes thing, oh. and, uh, Bank of America, Merrill Lynch report. So, you know, it, it might sound crazy, but it's just because we've never heard of it. So, you know, you could verify for yourself. Yeah, that could be, it, it, it could be true because so many of these things in our foods, what, what's in our foods that are, you know, in fact, I think we talked a little earlier, even uh, they made this study and we all did this. I mean, I'm, I don't know if you're, your mom did it, but most of us used uh, baby powder, and uh, and now they find out they just recently found out that baby powder has something that causes I think cervical cancer, ovarian cancer, ovarian cancer, right. and I mean I'm, I'm, I was shocked because I mean it was something that we all. Every one of us uh, powdered our babies, you know, diaper change. We powdered our babies, and uh, and then we find this out. It's just it's so scary. I mean, you know, I'm thinking about what did I cause to in my my daughters, you know, by just powdering them. I mean, we thought it was safe. Right, but the problem was no parents researched it. They just thought it was safe. They assumed and trusted that people are looking out for your best interests, but. It's not always the case, and uh, you know, it's really the parents' fault for not making sure that that stuff is safe. So um, it's like the parents are really harming their kids, even though that's not their intention. But just by not verifying things, it can lead to a big problem. So, so when you say verify, I mean, we you, everything we do, we have to look up well, research. I mean, um, uh, if you know, for the important things, you know, like things you're feeding your kid and using on them, you know. You should take out a half hour and make sure it's safe. You know, it's interesting be that you said this because a friend of mine, she drinks a lot of diet uh, soda, a lot of diet uh, colas, mm -hmm. and there are, you know, substitute sugars in the diet colas. Right, that aspartame. Aspartame, which is, and what has happened in, uh, since she's been drinking it, she drinks so much of it, she gets paralyzed. For maybe a couple of hours, she cannot move her arms, she cannot move her legs, and she went to, from doctor to doctor. And um, as again, I learned a little uh, from you again. I did some research on the colas and found out that aspartame can cause paralysis, temporary paralysis, in some cases. Yeah. And she happened to be one of those people that's sensitive to aspartame, and she got it. Uh, one time we had to take her, we had to get an ambulance to take her out of a restaurant that we were at, and it happened again. She was on an airplane, and she was in first class, and what is first class? They just keep on bringing those colas, you know, over and over and over, and she couldn't get out of the, her seat. Yeah, they, they had to get another, uh, you know, uh, paramedics to get her out of her seat, and it all comes from aspartame. And people don't realize that they don't do any research. Right. It's like we have our head in, heads in the sand, like an ostrich, and then we have all these problems, and we wonder why. Well, it's really simple if you do a little research. So, people really should take personal responsibility, and you know make sure that what they're doing is safe for them. And, and how family. do you find out that, you know, when you do research, how do you, how do you, your sources and who do you trust? I mean, uh, we all get, you know, there's Wikipedia, there's so many different, um, you know, apps and uh, research material. How do you know what's true, what's correct, you know, how do you know, how do you do it? Sure. Well, you have to look at the sources. Um, you know, you have to cross-reference them and, you know, see if it's, is it just one person saying it or has it been uh, 
corroborated by you know a lot of other people, and there was kind of a consensus on it. Um, you know, doing some critical thinking yourself. Um, you know, looking at scientific studies, like you had just pointed out, the Johnson and Johnson one about the baby powder being proven to cause cancer. You know, that's not up for debate. It's been proven. So, um, you know, things like that is how you can verify. But it. how many years have people been using this product? And they just found, I mean, people have been using this product since probably the 30s, the 30s, the four, and they're just finding out now, and people have been using it for how many years? Right. Um, well, that's a great point that you bring up about people using a product for so long and you know not finding out till it's almost too late that there's a big problem with it. If you look at asbestos, um, they said, oh, in the 1980s, that's when we found out it was dangerous, and you know that's actually a big lie. If you looked up the history of asbestos, it was used 5,000 years ago in ancient Rome and Greece, and was documented then to kill people and give them cancer. So. Um, I don't know, it might sound weird, but it's uh, people suppress information and, you know. So it's like they've known about it for a long time, they just started to tell you now. So it's on us for... Right, and you know, and sometimes you have to, you know, you go to a doctor and um, uh, I used a, a, a drug when I was pregnant with my son and um, Bendectin actually it was. and. He was born without any hearing in his ear, one ear, no hearing whatsoever. And I didn't think anything of it. I, I mean, I thought what's going on, but I just, just, you know, just thought it was something, you know, during the, pre you know, pregnancy it didn't form or what have you. And then years later, I'm at a hotel in Savannah, Georgia, and I was at the hotel reading some literature that was on the table. I was waiting for my husband to come down. Uh, he had to go up to the room for something. And there it was, Ben Decton, causing, it, was, it caused deafness, it caused heart problems, it caused, and they, they had a lawsuit going on. And I, I, I couldn't even breathe at that point. I just sat there. I was so stunned remembering that when I did take the drug for nausea, my doctor said, I said, are you sure it's okay? And he said, absolutely, I give it to all my patients. Right, we wouldn't be giving it to you if it wasn't okay. But, uh, but look what happened. Yeah, and that's terrible, and it's, those actions are criminal, and you know, the, the people should go to jail for that because it's really causing a and lot it was, of suffering. And the doctor, it wasn't his fault because he, the pharmaceutical companies that used to go into the doctor's offices, I still think some of them still do, and push these their drugs. And, you know, unfortunately, uh, you know, they, you, you trust the pharmaceutical company and you think that the drug is, hey, this is a good drug, and then you find out several years later that that drug causes this, this, and this. Right. Yeah, and that's, again, it's that, uh, you know, verify for yourself. You really can't take anyone's, uh, you know, word for it. If, you know, to make sure, you got to do it yourself, I guess. Well, you know, Tom, I am really, I'm so impressed by you. I mean, you take the time and you do this research. You do this type of thing. And you need to, you know, you're young and you need to go and talk to many other, your friends and, and just keep uh, telling people to do research. You know, research and research the research right. to make sure that you're not just getting, you're just not getting, um, you know, from one source. And I want to, well, I want to get you back on the show. I know you have other things that we haven't hit on yet. And I know that you're thinking about other things right now. And um, I, I'm, I would really, you know, by the time you're 22, can you imagine you're going to conquer the world? Eh, I don't know, maybe. Yes, and so um, again, I want to thank you for, you know, information. You, I, you know, you should go to met as many schools as possible to give your opinions and get other young people to do the research that you've been doing and their research as well. So I want to thank you again well. for being on the show.